I heard about these awesome videos on the Math Counts site, so I called up Math Counts and I said, hey, I want to do that too. And they said, okay, but only if I can make better videos than the regular guy. Here's the regular guy. I had to turn the volume down because this guy talks too much. Let's check him out. That's some good math. This guy must be wicked smart. I don't know if I'm as smart as he is, but well, at least I am better looking than he is. Of course, that's not a very high bar to clear. I'm gonna have to look for some other way to beat him. Let's see, what's that? What's that he's writing on? Is that a whiteboard? That's so 2009. I've got a big screen TV here. I can do all kinds of stuff with this TV that he can't do. I can show you videos of him. He can't show you videos of me. So let's, let's see. I'm going to do some math here. I'm going to do some math on my big screen TV, and then you're going to vote for me. That's right. That's how Math Counts is going to decide if I get to keep doing the videos or not. They're going to have a vote. And here's how you vote. You go to the Math Counts Facebook page, and it'll explain there how you can vote for me, not the other guy. Now, before I dive into the math, I have to spend, send out a special thank you to the Connections Academy. They sent this shirt to the other guy. I stole it out of his closet. This shirt here says, Moving at the speed of learning. That means that the students on the Connections Academy Math Counts team move a lot faster than all the rest of the students in the school. All right, so let's get into the math. Here we go. Here's the problem. Some of the first 20 positive even integers. Well, we know what those integers are. We start from 2. We go up 4, and then 6, and then so on, up to 38, and 40. And we have to find the sum of these. And uh, how do we find the sum? These are evenly spaced out. That makes finding the sum of them really easy. Take the first one and the last one, 40 and 2, that's 42. And then we go up from the 2, we go up by 2, and then from the 40 we go down by 2. Since we're going up and down by the same amount, the sum of these two is the same as the sum of these two. These two add to 42, these two add to 42, 36 and 6, they'll add to 42, and so on. So we can take these 20 integers and pair them off into 10 pairs. Each pair has a sum 42. So the sum of all of them is 42 times 10, 420. Now we have to deal with the other four consecutive even integers. So let's go ahead and put in blanks for them. And we need to figure out what the largest one is. All we know about them is their sum and that there are four consecutive even integers. So how can we figure out what these numbers are? Well, these numbers are evenly spaced out. So one thing that's cool about evenly spaced out numbers is their mean is right in the middle. Whoa! Oh, oop. Can't write on the screen. Giant iPad! I need a giant iPad! You have to vote for me, and then I'll go get a giant iPad. We'll do it on a giant iPad next time. But now, back to the math. I've got four numbers. They add up to 420. They're evenly spaced out, so that means their mean is right in the middle. The mean is just the sum divided by how many numbers there are. There's four of them. 420 divided by 4. That means the middle is 105. And now we can figure out what the numbers are. They're consecutive even integers, so this one's just below 105. This is 104. This is 106. And that means the largest one is 108. Let's see that other guy do that. And if you want to see me work on a giant iPad, you're going to have to vote for me. So now, now that we're done the math, you have to go over to the Facebook page and vote for me, not the other guy. That's a wrap. Let's put this away. Hey! Where did that come from? The other guy! The other guy must have put this here. It's the hidden problem trick. Did you teach him that? Ah. All right, all right. Other guy's going to challenge me. I have to step up. I have to knock down this problem. Let's see, we've got measure of the interior angles of a convex hexagon. The other guy must know that I don't know anything about hexagons. But I do know about triangles. So if I take my hexagon, I'm going to just take my hexagon and break it into things that, that I understand. I understand triangles, so I'm going to break my hexagon into triangles. Split it up into triangles. Let's see, so I get all the angles of the hexagon. If I break it into triangles like this, I can find the sum of all the angles in the hexagon just by adding up the angles of the four triangles. The sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So I've got four triangles. So when I add them all up, I'll get 720 degrees total in the angles of a hexagon. 
Hopefully that'll be helpful. Let's see, the, the angles form an increasing arithmetic sequence. That means the angles are equally spaced out. It's kind of just like the four numbers in the last problem. You know, that other guy, he may be devious, but at least he's sporting. He's giving me a chance. Maybe we can use the same strategy. So we've got six angles. They form an arithmetic sequence, so they're equally spaced out. We'll go ahead and draw some blanks for them, just like we did last time. And we know that because they're equally spaced out, we know that their average, their mean is right in the middle. And there are six numbers. They add up to 720, so that mean is, they add up to 720, so the mean is 120. 720 divided by 6. And we know that these angles are equally spaced about 120. They can't all be the same, so they're not all going to be 120. So we're going to have one, the ones that are closest to 120, one's going to be just below 120, the other one's going to be just above. So let's go as close as we can to 120, 119. And if we're going to have one that's one below 120, the one that's just above 120 is going to be one above. 119, 121, and that means the angles are spaced two apart. 119, 121. It's an arithmetic sequence, we keep going, 123, 125. But now what if this angle were too lower than 120? So this one's 118, the one that's just above is too higher than 120. 118, 122, they're going up by 4, 126, 130. So now we'll go 3 below 120. That means the next one's three above 120, again, because they're equally spaced about the average. 117, 123, that means we're going up by six now. 129, 135. And we just keep going, and we start to see the pattern. The pattern unfold. We go four below, four above. That means they're eight apart. We go up 132, 140. We start at 115, the one that's just above is 125, 135, then 145. And then the next one up would start at 114. That's 6 below 120, so this one's going to be 126. And now they're going up by 12 each time. The next one's 138, and the last one's 150. Less than 150 degrees. Can't use that one. So there are five. We found five possible sequences. What was that? Right there. So. Take that, other guy. I solved your problem. So now, see, you saw me. You saw me take down the other guy. He threw this problem in here, snuck it in on me, and I solved it. So you've got to vote for me. Go to Facebook. Vote for me. Ah, oh, phew. Ah! Oh, it's the double hidden problem trick. Ah, oh, this guy's fiendish. What are we going to do here? Seven distinct... Oh, I've got to solve the problem, right? Oh, seven distinct positive integers. The mean and the median are both, th they're not equally spaced this time. Uh, can't use the same trick. Um, well, let's just, well, maybe we can still think about the middle. I mean, the median means the middle. We've got seven numbers. Seven numbers. All right, we'll do, well, we did, last time, we did just start off by drawing out the blanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven numbers. And the median, well, the median is the middle. So we know that one of the numbers, at least, one of them is 30. We could put that one right, right there in the middle. Oh, now what do we do? See, the mean is also 30. The mean is also 30. The median is 30. And how can we figure out? We want the largest possible integer. So we want the one that's way out here in the end. If you put these in increasing order, we want this to be as large as possible. So I think that means we want these to be as small as possible. Because if the mean is 30, well, that means if we take the distance from the mean to each of the lower numbers, so we take this distance, this distance, and this distance, and we add these three distances up. Okay, this is the distance from 30 down to all the small numbers. 30 is the mean. So those, the sum of those distances has to equal the same thing when we add all the distances to the larger numbers. All right, that's what the mean means. It's right there in the middle. Averages out, and nice. It's like a balance. Like you put all the numbers on a number line. You put dots where each number is, and they balance out nice and even. So the sum of these three distances has to be the same as the sum of these three distances because 30 is the mean. So we want this one to be as big as possible. We want this number to be way on out there. So we need these numbers to be as far from 30 as we can get them because we want these, the sum of these distances to be really big so we can make this one really big. So they're distinct positive integers. So they have to be positive, and they have to be different. So we make them as far from 30 as we can. We make them 1, 2, 
and 3. So now this, the smallest one is 29 away from 30. This one's 28 away from 30. This one's 27 away from 30. So when we add those three distances, we get 84. So we know that the sum of these three distances also has to be 84. Now we want this one to be as big as it possibly can be. So we want to make these two really small. Again, the integers have to be different. So we'll take these next two numbers to be 31 and 32, because that's as small as we can make them and have them still be larger than 30. We need them to be larger than 30 because we know that 30 is in the middle because it's the median. So this one's one more than 30. This one's two more than 30. So that's three total for these two. And that leaves 84 minus 3 is 81 for this to be as large as it possibly can. 81 and 30, that is 111. And that's the largest possible integer this set can, can contain. And take that other guy. So now you know you have to vote for me because he pulled off the double hidden problem trick and I still knocked them both off. That is rap. Hey, who let that guy in here? I'll show him. Let's see here. That's better. He looks a lot better now.